Hello. After I finished messing around with the oil system yesterday, I remembered I wanted to take the tail skid off the Aronka because it's getting worn. I hold it on end on there, you'll see it's particularly worn here. It's been on several years, in fact, quite a long time actually, um, and it's, it's lasted well. It's made out of 4130, so it is chrome moly steel, and it's nominally an eighth of an inch thick. I used to have a tailwheel on the airplane, I did for years, and in fact, uh, it converted itself to a skid one windy day at Davidstowe Moor when the old tailwheel went down a nasty hole in the runway, promptly broke off, and it broke the weld. Must have been a bit of my dodgy welding. Um, it used to have a pivot, I suppose, about there with the with the wheel behind it. In fact, I can sort of mock it up by uh, by sort of showing the wheel was about there. Anyway, it broke off here, and of course, me being cheerfully me, I got outside, realised that that's all broken, chucked the wheel in the back of the aeroplane, and roared off again on the stump of the uh, on the stump of the arm. Got back to the airstrip on the grass, it being windy and it had been quite a pig to taxi out because it wanted to turn into wind. And of course it was as easy as anything taxiing in with a skid. So I thought, sod it, I'll have a skid. And I've had a skid ever since. It's got a hole in it just for either tying to the back of motor cars when we want to tow fuselages along, or bolting through a, a shopping trolley caster, which I've used a couple of times when I went to Newquay some years ago. Anyway, having had a ferret around in the back of the hangar, I found a nice piece of 3 sixteenths 4130, so the same chrome molly steel. So I think it's time to carve a new skid out of this. I was going to inflict some uh, CAD on you, that's cardboard aided design, but I don't actually need to. I had a brainwave realised that this thing is so worn out that I could just squash it in the vise and it's sort of bent down on the on the bit where it's worn really thin. So it's it's flat enough to draw around. I know I worked out the, the this one geometrically using my old school geometry set, but I'm not going to bother this time, I'm merely going to draw around it. position of the holes and frankly that'll do. I always build my workbenches with a bit of an overhang on the front so you can clamp things and cut. Um, I can't remember where I got that trick from but it's very useful. A couple of G-clamps and uh, these longer things can be cut quite easily and they tend to make a less of a screaming sound than in the vice. Other useful thing is uh, Starrett hacksaw blades. These things are superb. I first came across them in the Middle East about 10 years ago and uh, Pakistani gentleman in a tool shop in Abu Dhabi assured me they were superb and he wasn't lying. They're absolutely brilliant blades. You'll find them on Amazon and all the rest of it. Uh, I think this one's 18 TPI. It's going to take a while cutting this and I don't think I'm going to inflict it all on you. Let's have a bit. Slow and steady wins the race with this. I need to go about another quarter of an inch or so. around with the angle grinder and make a hell of a racket and uh, piss the neighbours off and uh, all the rest of it. But it doesn't take that long to file all the edges up. I cut them reasonably accurately and a uh, decent file. Workpiece in the vise nice and close to the jaws so it doesn't make a horrible screeching sound and uh, 
you just have to crack on really. <laughs> filing a radius you want to knock the tops off going this way but finish the job off going that way always you'll end up with a quite nice job I've done that end already it's not perfect but it's not far off I'll give a quick tickle in a moment but that's certainly the method I was taught when I was an apprentice and it works pretty well so I'm just going to knock a couple of high spots off there <laughs> It doesn't matter though because it'll all blend out when I do this. Just need to move the job around a bit more so I can get the high spot there. nearly there so I'm just gonna carry on going around like that and that'll be the job done then just deburr the edges and uh, and shine it up in the wheel next door fitting and uh, it doesn't fit in the normal vice that well so the answer between thread cutting on these sorts of things is at least to start them in the drill vice and just put the put the tap in the chuck just the taper tap just to start off and I can rotate it quite easily by hand it's got a bit of oil on it basically the drill's nice and loose the, the head on this drill always wants to drop I always have to clamp it up it's all a bit ancient and knackered I know the feeling and uh, it's ideal for just getting a nice perpendicular cut it's most of the way through Last thing is to bend the uh, new shoe to shape, but who spotted the schoolboy error? I thought about it earlier. This thing, of course, was was worn at exactly the right angle for me to bend the new one to. And being a bunny, I went and stuck it in the big vise next door, squashed it flat and drew around it, which wasn't very bright, looking back. I've had a go at bending it back to what I think is about the right uh, angle of dangle as it was before, and frankly, it doesn't really. The other one lasted several years. Um, 
If I notice a really irrational wear pattern on it, I can always bend it at some point in the future. Anyway, let's uh, fire up the gas, give it some heat, and uh, bend it over. I probably bent this one cold with our 316 stuff. I think there's very little chance of getting a nice bend in it. I don't want to beat my vice to pieces next door, so I think a, a gentle bit of red heat and uh, stick a spanner on the top and uh, and lean it over is probably the way forward. So let's try that. That's not bad. I did rather destroy the evidence, but it's just bent slightly less than the other one was. So that's that's good. I'm not sure whether one should quench chrome molly still. Probably not. I won't. Definitely not if you're doing a fitting for an aircraft. You make it all weak and nasty. Um, I think I'll just let it air dry. It is the normalised version anyway. I think I'll just let it cool down and then clean it up and bolt it on to the rest of the job. The skid's all shone up now and I've bolted it through the arm. I've used a couple of new BSF bolts. In fact, the old one, because it was slightly thinner, I know the bolt stuck through slightly and I peened the top of the, of the bolts over. Uh, this one, I'm not gonna be able to do that. I don't wanna put center punch marks. I wanted to better use the bolts again. So what I did, whilst you weren't watching, was I drilled the heads of these bolts that I drilled with a 16th drill. Um, they drilled fairly straight, they're pretty good. Anyway, the point being is once I've just given it a squirt of rattle can black, I can wire lock these bolts together so they won't come loose. I'll give the other bits a squirt of paint too and then put them back on the aircraft. I'm very pleased with that, that's quite a nice job. Anyway, if you're still awake, thanks for watching, see you soon.